Okay, Travis, it looks like we're live. Go ahead when you're ready. All right, good morning. Uh, it is, is it nine o'clock? 9.01 is what I have yesterday. It is 9.01, Monday, February 22nd. Uh, I'm going to call this special meeting of the Planning Commission. Um, I'd like to establish that we have a quorum present. Yes, sir. We have seven members. Okay. Uh, we're going to go right to the regular agenda. Related comprehensive plan amendment and rezoning. City Council has final authority for approval of comprehensive plan amendments and rezonings. A. 2218 Martin Luther King Drive and 200 blocks of West 22nd and 23rd Streets. CP 21 01, 200 block of West 23rd Street, a request for approval of an amendment to the City of San Angelo comprehensive plan changing certain lands from the neighborhood future land use to the commute commercial future land use being 0.16 acres located in the 200 block of West 23rd. Z 21 01, 2218 Martin Luther King Drive and 200 blocks of West 22nd and 23rd Streets. Request for approval of a rezoning from the general commercial, heavy commercials, and single family residential zoning districts to the general commercial zoning district located at 2218 Martin Luther King Drive, three lots in the 200 block of West 22nd, and one lot in the 200 block of West 23rd Street, being 1.125 acres. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Stribling and Planning uh, Chair Stribling and Planning Commissioners. This is Jeff Fisher, Principal Planner. Our first case today. And uh, all of these cases today were tabled from, from last week due to the inclement weather storm. Um, this is a comprehensive plan amendment and, and a zone change for uh, what is Franco's restaurant. Uh, so there's seven lots. The comprehensive plan amendment is just for the one lot. I'll go to the maps in a minute. Uh, furthest to the east, it's for overflow parking. Uh, that um, lot was zoned RS1 and designated neighborhood. So that's gonna change to commercial. And that'll facilitate the rezoning of this lot. As part of that, staff looked at it further and discussed with the applicant. These other six lots are zoned CGCH, which does allow a restaurant already, but uh, we didn't want the heavy commercial so close to the residential. So this is going to be a cleanup of the other six lots as well. So the zoning will be exclusively CG and the comp plan area, future land use will be exclusively commercial. So let's go. This is District 4, Lucy Gonzalez in the Reagan neighborhood. So as you can see, there's the one lot that's going to be part of the comprehensive plan amendment from neighborhood to commercial. And there's the zone change for all seven lots from CGCH and the RS1 uh, to CG. So this is looking at the property right now. What triggered all this is uh, Franco's Restaurant is looking at doing an expansion to the north. Uh, uh, they've been applying for some tiers money to do some uh, parking improvements as well. And so this would just basically be a cleanup and let them move forward with their with their project. Uh, so this is the, the vacant lot right now that's kind of being used for overflow parking. So this in future could be uh, resurfaced over and used as, as a legal parking for the restaurant once the zoning, this gets approved. Uh, this is the, the southerly lots, which are not being used right now. Again, you know, if they have special events or on Sunday morning, they might have some overflow, but this is basically vacant land as it stands. This is looking up uh, on Martin Luther King Drive or looking south. Uh, the city did a, a recent improvement. Uh, so you've got new uh, curbs and uh, streetscape in there. So that's all been, been done already. And this is West 23rd Street. Uh, there's an associated case today. As mentioned, they want to expand on the north end here. They're going to need more room. So there is a, a street right of way abandonment for an additional uh, area in here. Uh, we'll look at that later today. Staff received one. Uh, response in favor for the zone change and one response in favor for the uh, comprehensive plan, uh, both from the uh, from the applicant. So we believe uh, we're in support of both requests. So we believe that they're compatible with the comprehensive plan and the and the uh, the zoning ordinance. Uh, the commercial designation will facilitate the associated rezoning to CG, allow um, the expansion and the overflow parking for the restaurant. Uh, the lots comply with all the CG standards. Uh, once the abandonment is approved, there's going to be a setback issue, but we will be able to approve uh, an administrative variance on that setback once the abandonment has taken place. Uh, it's compatible with the surrounding area. You have a lot of institutional uses and retail uses pretty much from 29th down to the loop already. Um, 
coming in from both sides uh, on MLK. There's an, also an area of CGCH in there already that allows commercial development. Uh, the future overflow parking uh, and the future expansion is what triggered this. So uh, allowing the rezoning will just make it more flexible for them to expand in the future. They won't have to keep coming back. Uh, no environmental effects. Uh, if they do uh, make any changes to their parking, we'll look at all that through the permitting process. Uh, we believe there's a community need. This restaurant has been in business uh, in San Angelo for a long time. Uh, it'll remove the heavy commercial zoning from this area, which we're, staff is in support of, as mentioned. You've got a lot of residences around there, so that'll just avoid things like industrial service and, and you know, storage and junk and things like that. And finally, uh, development patterns with no anticipated change. The majority of traffic. Jeff, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, my signal has has faded out. I don't see your face and your there's an echo. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm not sure where the echo is coming from. Can everyone else see me okay? I can see you now. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, and, and just the final uh, con criteria, number seven, development patterns. Uh, they're not changing anything. The access will still be from MLK. Um, they have been discussions about a, a drive-through on the north side. Again, that's all down to permitting, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, but we still anticipate most of the traffic is going to come from, from MLK. Um, that's really where the, the customers will be driving in from. So that concludes staff's presentation. This is a straight rezoning and comp plan, so there's no... Um, uh, conditions of approval. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm available for questions. Are you also handling the right of way abandonment? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. I think uh, it would make sense to go ahead and hear that case right after this one, if that suits you. Sure. Okay. So you want to have questions for the staff? All right. I'm going to open it up for public comment. If you wish to speak on this key case, please state your name. Uh, Mr. Fluger, did you want to speak on this? I think you've covered it uh, completely. Thank you very much, Jeff, if you can hear me. Yes, sir, we yes, can. Sir. This is uh, uh, the general uh, change of dynamics within the restaurant industry that requires a uh, really more focus on takeout is the reason for uh, wanting to uh, uh, create a space on the north side of the building that's uh, adjacent to the kitchen that would allow uh, direct access by the public to the um, to go and carry out area for the for the restaurant. If y'all have been up there, that right now the the carry out is a uh, is at the front desk and it's. Uh, creates quite a bottleneck, but that'll alleviate that and maybe create a, an opportunity to, to increase the volume up to volumes that we had before the COVID. But I'm willing to answer any questions if anybody has any questions. Thank you, Mr. Fluger. Anyone have questions for Mr. Fluger? Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to speak on this case? All right, I'm gonna close public comment. Uh, anyone have thoughts or wish to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve as presented. All in favor, say aye by show of hands. And opposed? That was seven zero. Seven zero, okay. We're gonna to go to the right of way abandonment. City Council has final authority for approval of right of way abandonments. Street right of way abandonment, 200 block of West 23rd, a request for approval of the abandonment of 6,582 square feet, to the south side of West 23rd Street, right of way between Martin Luther King Drive and Far Street. Thank you again, Chair Stribling. Uh, so this is the associated right of way abandonment uh, for West 23rd Street. So as mentioned, uh, Mr. Fluger was mentioning the expansion of the restaurant in this area here. So originally the request was for uh, basically 25 feet uh, of right of way 
which would take it right to 23rd Street. Well, there's a water line in here. And if the city ever wanted to do any maintenance work or make any changes there, it would be difficult. So we, we settled on uh, scaling back that request a little bit to 22 feet of right of way, which is 6,582 square feet. Uh, the city, as part of this, and we'll go over this in a minute, will uh, obtain a five foot easement for that water uh, main and any maintenance there. Um, there's also some other utilities uh, that are also requesting that. So uh, in total, there'll be a, a basically a blanket easement over that area. That'll allow them to expand and they'll be in the administrative range of 22 and a half feet uh, once you take the setback into account so they can get a variance, uh, which we could approve administratively to allow that, that restaurant to go in. So this is what you're looking at here. Uh, as part of the request, we don't wanna create an irregular jog in the street and there are two residents over here. Uh, so they are part of this as well. It's gonna be um, all of the 22 feet in, in front of this area uh, and may require some, some minor street realignment uh, later on, but um, we believe based on the criteria they've, they've satisfied. So let's go forward. Uh, same district and neighborhood. Uh, so the future land use is commercial neighborhood zoning is CGCH and RS1. Uh, so 20 notices were mailed out. Uh, we didn't receive any responses in favor and opposition on this request. Uh, I did get a couple calls from some of the neighbors up here just inquiring about it. Once I explained to them what this was for, they were in support or had no objections. So this is again, looking at the Franco's properties. I'm just gonna skip ahead because you've seen most of these photos. So this is the one in question now. So if you go along West 23rd Street, it's basically to be this area in here. That'll allow a drive-through uh, stacking queue to go in this way. This area will be open and then there'll be an easement that'll cover um, that water line, like I say, is running along about here. And then some of the electrical poles over here. So this blanket easement will, will cover all that and still allow them to uh, expand. So here's a schematic uh, provided by SKG that shows that uh, as one of the conditions will be a, a replat required. So uh, what that will do will actually serve a couple purposes. It will um, bring all of this, um, this area here into um, merge all that together into a platted, several platted lots, but it'll also, these setbacks are non-complying right now. So it'll actually fix that as well by giving these two neighbors more room for parking and for setbacks. So planning staff circulated all the relevant municipal departments, uh, utility companies, there were no objections. The only two uh, utilities that had uh, concerns and they're okay now with the easement was AEP because of those electrical poles there uh, and Altice, which um, formerly Suddenlink, which has their, um, equipment uh, on those lines. And so they both uh, had responded and said they were fine with that. Uh, the required replat as a condition of approval uh, will just be for more consistency, allow that future maintenance and improvements. Uh, so we also looked at the traffic patterns. Again, we don't believe this is gonna change the traffic patterns. Uh, we'll address the drive-through queue. They do have enough space for that. They just need to lay that out before permitting and show us how that's gonna work. Um, again, the unobstructed easement will address this, the utility company concerns. There's no community impact and the public benefit will just give more front yard space for all of those properties. So that's a good thing. Staff recommends approval of the street right-of-way abandonment of 6,582 square feet, 0 0.151 acres on the south side of West 23rd Street right-of-way between Martin Luther King Drive and Far Street, subject to three conditions. And these are standard. Uh, so provide a Sub, submit a subdivision replat. They have 36 months to do that. Uh, pay the assessment formula and the schedule of fees and charges by the city. Uh, and once the associated plat and payment have been received, uh, record the uh, quick claim deed, which will uh, officially abandon that land and, and give that land to the owner. Uh, just a couple notes, future replatting may require roadway improvements. Uh, once they dedicate that 22 feet, uh, they may have to realign that street just a little bit um, on 23rd. And also no permanent buildings or structures may be placed within the access easements, but uh, a drive-through lane is acceptable. This concludes uh, my presentation. If anyone has any questions or comments and I'll stop sharing my screen. Do we have questions for the staff? Harry, you're muted if you're talking to us. Okay. Thank you. Yes, me. I'm sorry. Uh, I have a question. There's. Uh, it looks like there are two single-family lots that are that have um, 
I guess, a portion of their land abutting the, the frontage that would be included in this abandonment. Uh, are those property owners acquiring their portion of the frontage? That's the intent, yes. Okay. Uh, have they have they indicated that they're going to do that? Yeah, I believe they have. I'm going to let uh, Mr. Fluger address that as well. I know he had approached them. And the replat has been submitted for the next planning commission meeting that does show those two. So um, if nothing else, we'll have signatures on that plat from the, from the homeowners as well. Okay. Yes, I can address that, Travis. Uh, the unusual thing about uh, 23rd Street, it's a hundred foot right, wide right of way. And they only use 40 feet of it in the road. Right. So, uh, uh, and none of the none of the improvements that we're talking about will be on the abandoned area. It's all within the property that we currently own. Sure. Uh, the two the two adjacent uh, landowners are are very um, pleased with uh, this this plan because actually right in the middle of the of the right of way are are some big pecan trees, <clears throat> which are really in their front yard. That they don't want to lose, and they don't want to lose them, and they uh, and, and they don't really have parking. And I think uh, uh, it's my understanding they're in non-compliance right now because the houses were built when they thought the street uh, was probably fifty feet wide instead of a hundred feet wide. Right. So no, they're both uh, they're both very uh, uh, excited about the program, as you can see from one of the earlier. Uh, uh, photographs which wasn't apparent is that the neighbor that's adjacent to the east of our property parks on our parking lot because he doesn't have room to park his cars on his own on his own property so he's okay. uh, he's, he's real excited about that okay uh, anyone else have questions for mr Fluger I guess I'm going to open it up for public comment. I don't think we had any additional public comment. Okay. So on these two tracks that have uh, a portion of this right of way abandonment, um, are they the only are they the only people that can acquire their frontage that's being abandoned? Yes. No. That is correct. Okay, so if they if they elect not to do it, uh, does it create a jog in the road? I'll I'll have that covered, Travis. Okay, I just didn't want to create a situation where they both indicated that they do want to acquire it. They uh, uh, if they have some financial problems, we'll get that solved. No problem. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fluger. Thank y'all so much. Appreciate your All right, I'm close public comment. Thank you, sir. Uh, Anyone have thoughts or wish to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve as presented by the staff. All in favor, say aye by show of hands. Opposed? Seven zero. All right. Um, we're going to jump back to the comprehensive plan amendment and rezonings. Nope, just rezoning, excuse me. Um, City Council okay. has final authority for approval of rezonings. PD 20-01, 630 South Oak Street, a request for approval of a rezoning from the light manufacturing, general commercial, heavy commercial, low rise multifamily residential and two family residential zoning districts to the planned development zoning district to allow for museums, offices and associated uses located north of East Washington Street, east of South Oak Street, south of Texas Pacific well, Railway, west of Rust Street, being approximately 38 acres. Thank you, Chair Stribling, uh, Planning Commissioners. So our next case today is a plan development, 2101. Uh, this was initiated by uh, Fort Concho. Uh, Fort Concho is doing an expansion of a couple new barracks buildings over here, uh, which were originally uh, part of the historical complex, uh, were destroyed about 100 years ago. And so this is part of their restoration project. Uh, it went to the DHRC a few months ago and the designs were approved. 
So they're gonna look very similar to the two buildings you see in the picture here. Uh, and as part of what triggered this is that there's four different zoning districts as part of this uh, special old special permit 1991. Some of the Fort Concho is actually up here and, and over here is not in the special district at all. So this is really a cleanup uh, to create a comprehensive PD to allow them to expand in the future and not have to keep coming back every time. One of the problems is with those four districts, uh, they require 25 foot setbacks. And a lot of these buildings were built at zero. Uh, and so when they came in for permitting here, they didn't meet those setbacks. They are um, replatting that now, but nonetheless, uh, this, this would just provide some cleanup and some flexibility and setbacks. Uh, we are looking at doing the CBD uh, development standards on this, and that's gonna allow the zero foot setbacks. It's also gonna exempt them from having to check parking every time if they decide they wanna put in parking, they'll have to meet our rules, but they won't have to meet the minimum requirements. So this is just essentially for Fort Concho, but there are some other uses in here as well. I'll go over in a minute. This is district three, Harry Thomas in the Fort Concho neighborhood. Uh, the total acreage is approximately 39 acres. So most of this is campus institutional and commercial uh, in the future land use. And then, as I said, the zoning right now has got four different zoning districts. Uh, it's a little complicated. So this is just gonna make this a lot simpler for them. Uh, so the ML, the CGCH, the RM1 and the RS2 is what's there right now. So I'll go over this very quickly, block 61. So there's 11 blocks as part of this is, um, a lot of these are just mainly parking or vacant until you get down uh, south of O'Flipper and you get into the fort. Uh, but like I said, there are some uses that are not part of the fort. So workforce solutions is block 62, uh, 65 is parking, uh, more Fort Concho here. Uh, there's 84 and 55. So these are the existing uh, barracks buildings in block 60. So the two new uh, buildings will essentially go in this uh, gap here in block 60. Uh, we mailed out 47 notices. We received three back in favor and one in opposition. Uh, we just got in late today. The uh, opposition was mentioning about taxes going up. Uh, again, we're focused on planning and zoning. Uh, so I don't wanna speak on that. It's usually uh, not an issue there's, I would think, but uh, again, that was the one neighbor down here was just a bit concerned. Uh, all these other neighbors are in support or had no objections. Uh, this is a concept plan that was submitted showing the um, blocks. So as part of this zero foot setbacks, CBD um, development standards, uh, exemption from parking, it'll also revoke that 9111 um, ordinance, which didn't include some of these outer areas in here anyway. So this is just gonna be a cleanup of that as well. Uh, I won't go over this because I already have in the pictures, but this is a block by block breakdown of, of what uh, is in Fort Concho. So we believe uh, the PD is compatible with the comprehensive plan, the campus institutional and the commercial pieces all support an underlying PD zoning. Uh, it's consistent with the zoning ordinance. As mentioned, the CBD development standards are gonna allow not only zero foot setbacks for the new buildings uh, so they can move forward, but also some of the um, historical and existing properties that, that were built right up to the street. Uh, all of the uses uh, at Fort Concho, um, uh, would be allowed in this new PD. We did add a couple new things uh, accessory that were, weren't in the original special permit, um, some accessory maintenance facilities. There's a couple um, uh, developments there that, that just store things related to Ford and uh, uh, Ford Concho projects. And so they will be allowed as well as uh, if they want to do commercial parking there, some of those big parking lots and, and charge a fee or they don't want to necessarily just have it for their specific use on their property, they can do that. Again, they don't have to charge, but it just gives a little more flexibility for some of their, um, some of those big parking lots on the north side of the development. Uh, the PD, as mentioned, will establish uniform standards uh, and there's no change to current development patterns. Staff recommends approval of a rezoning from the ML, CGCH, RM1 and RS2 zoning districts to PD 2101 to allow for specific uses so this will allow all the Fort Concho Museum uses, offices, conventions and meeting halls, special events. Um, so the, for example, the Christmas light tour, commercial parking and the development standards subject to three conditions. So number one is just listing all of those uses. So this, most of these as mentioned were already in the original special permit. So 
associated retail sales to the museum. So that's, that would just cover the gift shop and things that are, uh, if they want to sell some merchandise that's related to Fort Concha, they can still, of course, do that. Um, the offices in the area, that'll cover the Fort, Workforce Solutions, and the Texas State Building, uh, meeting halls, uh, and related accessory uses. Uh, the CBD development standards will now apply, uh, and the PD revokes um, SP 9111. And that just spells uh, the long version of, of what I've just told you. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Any questions? Do you have questions for the staff? I will say we're very excited about this. Having four different underlying zoning districts on one, basically one property is a huge thing. So this will allow us to have one comprehensive zoning area for the fort. And um, we're really trying to help Bob kind of piece by piece, get, get it all straight from our side. So. And I know this isn't part of the project, but the DHRC was approved and went very well. Those designs will use the original stone. Uh, we had a, a really good architect, uh, Killis Almond, uh, work with Bob and, and staff on that. And so those, uh, the original materials sent, or as close as they can get to it will, will match what you see out there today. That's great. Okay, uh, I'm gonna open it up for public comment. Bob, I don't know if you're trying to speak, but you're muted if you would like to say something. Uh, good morning, everyone. I've heard all the reports and I would just say that we are most appreciative of the staff's support and hard work on this. And it cleans up sort of an administrative messy situation that has plagued us for decades. And if we get this approved, we can move ahead on a much better plane. Maybe I shouldn't use the word plane given the water situation. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Killis, did you have anything to add? You're muted, sir. Yeah, I have to go down and see the button. Uh, yes, I have nothing to add. This is definitely an issue. Uh, without changing it, we literally couldn't put porches back on the buildings and things like that because of setbacks. So this allows us to use the current code and work with city and uh, create uh, a, as close a replica as we can. Okay, sounds great. Anyone else wish to speak on this case? It would also prevent someone from building a condo in the middle of the parade ground. <laughs> All right. Laugh. That was suggested by a previous city manager. It was. It was proposed at some point, huh? Uh, actually, he wanted a swimming pool. He was pulling my leg, but sometimes I couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to close public comment. Anyone wish to make a motion or share thoughts? Make a motion to approve as presented. And second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve as presented. All in favor say aye by show of hands. Opposed? Seven zero. Seven zero. Right. All right. Thank you guys. Amendment Thank to PDO 7-03, 2909 South a &M Avenue, a request for approval of a plan development amendment, PDO 7-03, to allow an additional use of a water processing and delivery business and related accessory uses for a property located at 2909 South a &M Avenue. Good morning, Shelley Pascal, City Planner. And this is an amendment to Plan development 0703 to allow water processing and delivery business and related accessories. It is located at 2909 South a &M Avenue, which is the, the old Travis School. It's within District 5, Blank Harder, and in the ASU College Hills neighborhood. This is showing that it's located within a plan development district and the future land use is neighborhood on this property. This is the subject building on the left-hand side that they're proposing uh, the facility to go into. And then on the right-hand side is the old Travis School building. We did send out 35 notifications and we did receive zero in favor and 26 in opposition. 
And just a little background information in August 20, uh, 2007, City Council approved the initial plan development district of 703. This was a rezoning from an RS1 district, single family residential district to a plan development for assisted group living. Then in April of 2013, City Council approved an amendment to this PD to allow the operations of a gymnastics academy. And the current proposal is to specifically add the allowance to uh, allow a water processing and delivery business. Um, the applicant, um, they will process on, on site. They will have an RO system on site and then bottle it on site. After it's bottled, they will deliver to their customers. Um, we do not feel that is in, is in keeping with the future land use of neighborhood. And this property is, is already within a well-established neighborhood, neighborhood that has single family homes and a church. The underlying zoning is single family residential district, RS1. Um, and this proposal of the PD is not consistent with the zoning ordinance. And the zoning ordinance intent is to protect the existing uses from undue impact. And we feel that this case, in this case, um, the surrounding neighborhood would not be protected by adding this commercial use. It is currently surrounded by single family homes and a church and the proposed use would bring traffic and noise that is not intended for a, a neighborhood. Um, there was an elementary school there for many years um, and, the, and most of the school buildings have been vacant for many years. And the specific building that they're wanting to occupy was occupied by a gymnasium academy um, until mid 2019 and then has remained vacant since. As I stated, this, this proposal could generate more, more traffic and noise into the residential area. However, you know, we do not feel that there will be any effects on the natural environment. Staff, we do acknowledge that there is a community need of commercial uses. However, we just don't feel this, this is the appropriate location given the, the, the closeness of the single family homes in the well-established neighborhood. And as this area of the neighborhood, um, this application is not consistent with the pattern and could have a negative effect on its surrounding area. Therefore, city staff, we are recommending denial of this plan development PD 0703 to allow an additional use of a water and processing and delivery business and related uses. And we do have a, let me stop sharing one moment. And uh, Mr. Chairman, if you would like to open it up for public comment, we do have a video we would like to share from one of the neighbors um, that uh, would like to voice his opinion on this situation. So if you don't okay. mind, thank you. I don't mind that. Before we open it up for public comment, um, Ray, can you tell me how many people uh, wish to speak on this case? Um, I only have one, one person besides the video. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm going to open it up for public comment. Okay, hold on one second. Ray, um, is Jack in here as well? I believe that's who Holly Berry is. Yes, that's correct. Okay, okay hold on one second, Jack. Let me let her play the video and then we'll let you speak as well. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> Hello, I am Larry Lorca and I live at 2790 Harvard Avenue. I and my family have lived here for about 40 years in a residential area. I and my neighbors don't want a commercial water bottling plant across the street from us and shouldn't have to look at it or hear it along with whatever related accessories are. Jack Gabriel brought the property in 2007 knowing that it was zoned for assisted living only. Apparently his business plan didn't work out and now he wants to change the rules to help himself, no matter who it hurts. I read in an article 
he wanted to breathe new life into the school. I think he should first take the asbestos out of its mouth and his knee off its neck. He said the metal building would be the quietest. That is not a true statement. If he really cared about the noise, he would put it in the back of Travis away from everyone but he would have to get rid of the asbestos and that would cost him, not us. Many of the neighbors we talked to were concerned about the building deteriorating, ceilings falling in, broken windows, and the asbestos possibly blowing from the building and being harmful. In my opinion, putting a water bottling plant 50 feet from broken windows in a building with asbestos issues would be something I don't think they will tell their customers. If I sound a little harsh and bitter, it's because Jack told Flo, my wife, if she didn't go along with this, he would do something she would dislike even more over there. I also believe being a real estate agent, Jack should be held to a higher standard. It's my opinion he hasn't been totally transparent to the situation and the people. Uh, thank you for your time. Bye. Okay, Jack, whenever you're ready, I think we're... Okay, can you hear me? Uh, no, sir. Let's see. There, there we go. go. We can oh. hear you now. Oh, you're Hold muted. On. Yeah, now you're muted. Unmute. Oh, there, there you go. go. Okay. Good morning. I'm Jack Gabriel, owner of the old Travis Elementary property. Um, I'd like to start off with the email that I received back. Was It was said that 30 letters were sent out and 26 were sent back in opposition of what I was shown was that 30 were sent out, two were sent back in opposition of, and then um, Miss Loika went out and started a petition and had approximately 26 signatures on that position. Now I'd like to start with, <clears throat> excuse me, Miss Loika, and when I told Mr. Loika what I was planning on doing. Uh, didn't really say anything in opposition of or in favor of. Miss Loika called me and said, and I quote, are they going to be selling meth? I said, no, ma'am. They will not be selling meth. They will be selling water. Um, and I never in any way, and I will go under oath saying this, never told Miss Loika that I would do something, if she didn't approve of this, that I would do something that she did not like even more. That, that is a complete lie, <clears throat> complete lie. Also, when I went around Friday and it, it was 28 degree, 20 to 28 degrees and there was still snow everywhere. I went up five houses deep on every block surrounding the Travis Elementary School. I've, I've got, and I couldn't, I don't know, can y'all see me? No, sir, no, not sir. right now. Okay. I've got two pages of signatures in favor of the water bottling company. And I explained this in truth, what it actually was going to be, that it was uh, just going to be open during daylight hours, nine to five. Matter of fact, most of the people or several of the people asked if they could sign up because they needed water right then because they were out of water. Uh, the city was, you know, our water was down, as you all know. Um, <clears throat> once I explained it, they said that some lady had came around and told them everything from the entire facility was going to be a water bottling plant. And there were going to be 18 wheelers running up and down the street 24 hours a day, maybe running over kids. That's a lie. There would be no 18 wheelers. Uh, delivery pickup would be starting out one one ton pickup making deliveries, and then if things went well, possibly one more one-ton pickup. Um, the noise would be, I mean, I don't even know how to put it. You, uh, when we had Texas tumbleweeds there, 
there was 450 plus kids a week um, in and out of that building. And that was a great thing. But there was there was lots of traffic and that's lots of noise. Um, this is going to be, pop, you know, say one to five employees, five max when it's, you know, say a year or two down the road. So we're talking about three or four vehicles in that parking lot at a time compared to every parking lot at Travis Elementary plus down the sidewalks when there was an elementary school going. So the noise and the uh, traffic is going to be hundreds and hundreds of times less with this water bottling, bottling facility compared to the gymnastics. Um, let's see that I have. Like I said, everyone that I explained it to, which was probably 40 people when I walked around, everyone was in favor of, and every one of them but two signed my paper um, in favor of, and they, they just said they didn't want to sign anything. I think they were elderly and they thought they were signing up for the service. Um, anyway, that's that's about all I have. I appreciate y'all's time and uh, I'll let y'all take it from here. All right, thank you, Mr. Gabriel. Yes, sir, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this case? If so, please state your name. Travis, I have a question for Shelly. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So um, with this new petition that he has or list of name or signatures, is there any way that we can get that so we can compare the original with this to see if some of those people have changed their mind or, you know, after the explanation? Yeah, we can get it for sure and, and compare them. I mean, I think one thing to make clear to you guys is it is a smaller, I would consider it a smaller commercial operation. So the, the RO system and the water bottling fits in the existing gymnasium. Again, they, they've told us several times that it's like the noise of a motorcycle. That's kind of the noise level that it will be. So it is not, I guess the picture we don't want to present to you, it's not the huge water bottling that's not what it is so it's somewhere in between the little drive up and fill your own bottles and the, the larger companies that you can think of um, we just as staff even with knowing those facts we just don't think this is the right location there's lots of locations in town that are great commercial spots and we've told them we'll be happy to find you you know to help find a spot if you need one this is in the middle of a neighborhood and that's a great place to have a school it's a possible great place to have assisted living so that, you know, you can have sidewalks and walk to the trails. Staff just, even knowing, again, Jack's been very honest with us the whole time about the, the size and the capacity of this, of this processing. We just don't think that this is the right spot for it being in the middle of that neighborhood. So that was kind of where staff was leaning. Again, I, I think it's something that the city could obviously use, um, but maybe just not in this location. Okay. Uh, Hillary, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I was just going to say, uh, and Mr. Murphy, that um, he sent a video. I don't guess y'all seen it, but basically it's the same decibels. All the equipment running at the same time is the same decibels as a diesel pickup at idle. Um, so I don't know where the motorcycle came in, but okay. it's, uh, it is a a diesel pickup at idle, the same decibels. And also that gymnasium was built for um, the band kids, you know, the bands to be practicing in there. So all the walls on the interior of the gymnasium are sound dampening walls. It's basically, it's tin with thousands of holes poked in it. So it absorbs the sound. So with the, especially with the doors closed, you won't be able to hear anything even from the highway, much less across the streets to the other homes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gabriel. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to close public comment and uh, open it up for a discussion amongst the, the commissioners here. Um, I've, uh, 
I think I've been on the planning commission for a couple of years now. I, I can't tell you exactly how long, but I can't, uh, I can't recall um, a case receiving this much opposition in the time that I've served on this board. And uh, I understand the circumstances that Mr. Gabriel's outlined. Um, it might be beneficial for him to present some documentation that shows support from some of these folks um, to help hash it out. I, maybe tabling this would be a, an option to consider. Um, but I'm, I, I tend to, I tend to feel the same way the city staff does. This is a, this is a commercial use in a residential neighborhood. And, uh, as, as light as it might be, um, the opposition from the, from the immediate neighbors that we've got documented here is uh, is pretty compelling. Does anyone else have thoughts they'd like to share? I mean, I would say that um, due to the fact that Mr. Gabriel actually went and did additional due diligence um, in the neighborhood and, you know, really explained um, the entire process of the operation um, and apparently does have those signatures, I would agree to table it. Um, I don't know how you feel, Terry. I know that was something that you had asked yes. for as well as far as just any documentation in order to give him a fair shot at potentially getting it approved. Right now, looking at the statistics with how many people are in opposition, I can completely see why no one would want to pass it. But again, I still feel like we owe him a fair shot in order to kind of balance the table back out. That's exactly what I was thinking, Hillary, uh, Hillary, uh, Brittany, is to uh, table it where we can get the, the signatures and look at those. And just, you know, right now it's kind of a he said, she said, and we need to make sure that we give him the opportunity to, you know, explain to the constituents and see, you know, what they if they've changed their mind and yeah, what we need to do uh, from there. It, it, the other circumstance that that Jack alluded to uh, when he was speaking earlier were the weather conditions. And uh, I can only imagine how difficult it was to go out and try to talk to somebody when it's 20 degrees outside and snow on the ground. So. Um, I think it would be fair as well if he does have um, any video footage or audio yes. um, on what the plant actually sounds like. Again, that way we can make a more educated decision. I agree. Absolutely. So I would like to make a motion to table. I'll second. second. And okay. I guess until next meeting, I think we have to have a timeline. So until March 15th. March 15th. Okay. We have a motion and a second to table until March 15th. All in favor say aye by show of hands. And opposed? 7-0. Seven, 7-0. Zero. Seven, zero. All right. Uh, if y'all have... If Hold on. We lost you, Jack. What? Okay. If y'all got, if I can take up one more minute of your time, actually, uh, Mr. Murphy has offered, and I, I put this out to all the neighbors as well. Well, we, they've actually made a motion and, and voted. So um, yep. if you want to discuss with staff, we'll be glad to talk to you. And then we will okay. bring this forward again at our next meeting. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. All right. The next case, amendment to PD 15 04 120 East Harris Avenue. Request for approval of an amendment to the plan development PD 1504 zoning district of the medical facilities campus to expand the district boundaries, to modify the development standards, and to allow uses in the central business district, as well as hospitals and drug processing and related accessory uses, being approximately 49 acres located north of East Tuig Avenue, east of Chadburn Street south of Woodrow Street and west of Main Street. Thank you, Chair Stribling and Planning Commissioners. Uh, Jeff Fisher again, Principal Planner. Our next case is PD 1504. It's an amendment to uh, the Shannon Medical Campus uh, PD. Uh, this originated in 2012. It was amended again in 2015 and 2017. Uh, so they are looking at um, adding some future uses uh, some of those uses, uh, for example, um, warehousing and drug and alcohol facilities, um, uh, pharmacies that are um, pharmacies that may or may not be related to the campus. There were, there were a couple of things in there that were not allowed by right. And so this just gives them some more um, 
flexibility. They've also added uh, two properties. Uh, there's a small piece down on Tuig uh, and another one um, up on uh, Magdalen here, which is used as a parking lot that they've uh, included in this as well. So a couple new lots uh, as well as uh, allowing that. So when we looked at this a little further, we wanted to do a cleanup. Um, we're suggesting uh, cutting down the current PD, which is very lengthy from about 14 pages down to nine pages. Uh, and it'll allow uh, some of those new uses that they wanted with the uh, CBD standards, uh, similar to the Fort Concho uh, case where you've got zero foot um, setbacks and exemptions from parking. In particular, we believe this was important for Shannon. Shannon does, has been here for over 80 years and they've got um, every time they add a building or a sign or something, uh, they would have to keep coming back in and doing amendments. So we believe this is a win-win for the city and, uh, and for Shannon Medical. So I'm just gonna go over uh, this. Uh, this Again, the ordinance is very lengthy, so I'm gonna do my best to, uh, for purposes of time, uh, just to cover the main points of what we're changing. The future land use uh, is downtown for the entire area, uh, and the PD 1504 is, is, current, is the current PD uh, again, minus those those uh, couple extra properties. So there's there's one kind of in here, uh, and then one uh, up on Magdalen here that was that is now uh, being used as as parking. So this is uh, part of this is a cleanup, and part of this is to allow uh, development flexibility of standards. So this is the existing uh, maintenance facility on Woodrow Street. Uh, the applicant has uh, recently obtained a uh, about to obtain a building permit to. Uh, expand that as well. So that's kind of what triggered this. We wanted to look at this a little further. Uh, this area in here on Oaks, north of College, uh, is a, a parking lot. This is the main hospital on 120 East Terrace. And then, of course, uh, all of you are familiar with some of these other facilities, the main Shannon Clinic on Beauregard. Uh, this is going to be a future parking garage over here. Uh, the Pediatrics Women's and Children's Buildings. Uh, this was the uh, MOB medical office building that uh, we looked at as part of the 2017 ordinance. Uh, and this is that one property uh, over here that uh, next to this home that is parking. So this will allow that to continue as well. So this is a huge area. So 73 notices were sent out. We did get two uh, back in, in support uh, over here. And this is a concept plan that they uh, provided to us. So the red are the two new properties being added in. Uh, and this, this green area here is not owned by Shannon and not included. Everything else is and already was before. So let's look at the, rather than going through the, again, we, we did our best. We, we chopped it down about nine pages, but I'm just going to go over the main changes for you now, and then we can open it up to discussion in a couple of minutes. So um, the proposed uses, the original PD was for a medical facilities campus. It allowed some overnight stay for patients and um, residents and uh, related to the campus, but uh, really not a lot else other than related to medical. Since some of those new uses, and also if they ever wanna sell some of those properties off or allow some associated businesses, we're just gonna go to straight CBD uses within the PD. So the only two uses now that wouldn't be allowed by right, and we're gonna add them in is, is hospitals, of course, because we need to, and the drug processing. So it'll still allow everything else that was already allowed before. The floor area ratio was set at 4.0. This is not the height of a building, this is the bulk. So if you have multiple floors, it's basically all of the floor area divided into um, the lot areas. It's very complicated to try to track this every time somebody comes in for approval. So we're removing the FAR and we're replacing it with a maximum height of 10 stories which is reasonable. Um, you've got other buildings that are, that are taller than that downtown, including of course the, the Cactus Hotel. If they ever wanted to go higher than that, um, they could apply for a conditional use and we could assess it on a case by case. Uh, and again, this just allows some flexibility um, from that, that floor area ratio. Uh, again, the setbacks, no changes. The, by using the CBD standards, they'll still be uh, zero feet at the front. A lot of the buildings in the campus are already at zero feet. So that's again, um, flexible. Uh, exterior building materials, um, currently uh, brick, stucco, masonry, and stone is what is allowed. You can have metal if it's less than uh, 1,200 square feet. That new building that came in uh, was a little bit more than that. So we have have put in a um, an opportunity here where the planning director can make exceptions. 
And that doesn't mean, you know, we're going to allow, you know, 30,000 square foot buildings or anything, but at least we can look at some of the um, elements and not just metal. There may be another material that, for example, a, a substitute for brick or for stucco that still looks um, and that's made of high quality design um, that will allow us to to have exceptions on a case by case. Uh, as mentioned, uh, parking and loading. So we're going to go by the CBD standards. This is going to be very helpful to them. Um, whenever they would come in for a building project, we'd have to go back and look at the whole campus and all of the parking spaces and count them all. This is a lot easier to do now. Um, let um, Shannon Medical self-govern in that respect. It is downtown. And so um, they will be able to provide their own parking needs in that respect. Uh, and finally, um, signs. They came in with a, a major expansion for sign for you see those really nice signs um, downtown that they added in um, in 2017 and 18. The problem was that in the um, ordinance, they had to keep updating their master sign plan every time they wanted to expand. This just takes out that master sign plan, but keeps the standards um, with one change. So we'll add from 220 to 250 square feet for a freestanding sign. And that, again, just matches the CBD standards. They'll still have the um, break for wayfinding signs where they can add um, two square feet per linear foot. Ba all that basically means is it's a it's one and a half times the lot area for regular signs. It's now going to be two for Shannon. So all that means is some of those smaller signs and the disabled signs or entry signs will just allow them to continue that. They'll have a little bit more signs they can put in than what normally is allowed, but they won't have to keep coming back every time. So we believe that this is uh, this request is compatible with the plans and policies. Uh, the CBD standards match the downtown future land use, uh, the zero foot setbacks, the exemption from parking and the um, elimination of that um, sign plan. Some of those other features uh, will be consistent and allow some flexibility for them. Uh, the PD uses are consistent with the surrounding CBD properties. Uh, the change conditions, as mentioned, some of the um, current PD standards don't allow all of the proposed uses. This one will. Uh, there's no effects on the natural environment. And you know, everybody knows Shannon. They've been in the community for a long, long time. So the PD will just allow them to um, add new buildings in the future. Uh, no change to development patterns. So staff is recommending approval of an amendment to the PD 1504 zoning district to expand the district boundaries, allow all the uses in the CBD, uh, as well as hospitals and drug processing and related accessory uses and modify the development standards in accordance with exhibit D. So this is pretty much what I've already went over. I'll just very quickly. So you've got all of the CBD uses, hospitals, drug processing. So everything Shannon wants to do. And again, if, if a small retail store wants to go in on one of their properties, say they want to sell that, or they just want to add something that's not necessarily related to the medical campus, they'll now have the flexibility to do that. Uh, same thing with the development standards. So I think I've covered everything. There's, there's really nothing else um, in there. Most of it is a repeat of what's already there. Uh, just quickly look at some of the exhibits. Um, this was talked about before. They have moved the sign uh, and they built a new sign over here since that point. But this was just a, a note about a future right of way. If, um, if they ever even off um, Harris Street and square that off. Uh, they won't be able to put anything in this triangle. Again, those are things that were already there um, from before. So I think that's it. I'm going to keep, um, I'll stop sharing my screen, but if anyone has any questions or wants me to go back to the ordinance, I can. All right. Anyone have questions for the staff? All right. We're going to open it up for public comment. If you wish to speak on this case, please state your name. Good morning, Russell with SKG Engineering. Um, thanks, staff, for working on this with us and Shannon. Hey, Jeff, could you maybe share your screen and go back to the proposed ordinance revisions and go to page 11? Um, there's sure. Some things in kind of thinking through this and, and reading up and, and, and even some things that we were doing to address uh, some of the veneer associated with the warehouse building addition. And, and, and I guess technology keeps advancing and growing and improving for what uh, what people do for building veneers. And so on the, the building facade standards, um, one thing that we'd like to do, you know, glass is used 
for windows, but nowadays they also use it um, as a facade to kind of fill in between windows. So I don't know if we could add, add glass as a type of facade and then also add um, some sort of an architectural stone veneer or maybe that's kind of already in there. You know, they, they have the architectural concrete masonry. Um, page 11, Jeff, on, on the actual report um, where you it's revised the actual proposed ordinance. Do you have yeah, okay. we have the ordinance. I don't think he has the ordinance. He just has the PowerPoint ready. So, but it should Russell, have the conditions. Okay. Yeah, let, let me know if you can see this because this is this is actually cutting and pasting from the ordinance. So this is the building facade standard section. If not, I can pull the ordinance, but let me know if it's if it's caught in here. Yeah, no, that, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, so the architectural concrete masonry I don't know if that could be changed um, because it's not, it's the appearance of stone. They do some sort of a synthetic material that looks like stone. So it's not necessarily concrete, but it looks like a stone. Are, are you talking about like ephus? Uh, it, it's similar to an ephus. It's, it's some sort of a, <clears throat> a structural panel that they, almost like fiberglass or, or some combination of, of high density polyethylenes and other materials that they, they, they cast it out and they paint it to look like a stone. And, and so. Well, and I think the other, Jeff, if you'll go to the next to G, um, I mean, we can definitely add glass. The other one is kind of, <laughs> we don't know what to call it. It's kind of hard to add in there, but we do have the exception that the developer has the discretion to make kind of decisions about building materials. So I think I know what you're talking about. Um, the one I have here in my office is kind of a dense foam, but it looks like rock. So I think those things could be substituted on certain in certain areas with certain things. We want to make sure that the quality of materials stays very high, obviously for this PD. But um, I don't think putting glass on there is an issue. You're, I mean, it's it's correct that some facades are completely made of glass. So I don't see yeah. that. I was going to jump in also, Hillary. I think everything that Russell's mentioned, we're comfortable with. Uh, and maybe if, if the commission is comfortable with it, the motion could include, um, you know, modifying this language. Uh, and then we could go back and talk with Russell. And between now and this going to council, uh, we, could, we could work on the language. I hate to try to word the language, you know, in the middle of a meeting. Uh, but if you guys are comfortable with staff working with Russell to come up with some language before this goes to council, I I'm good with that. Yeah, and Ru Russell, I just want to address your your concern about the glass too. We we could look at that as um, John and Hillary were were mentioning, but this would not. We're talking about walls of buildings, so if it if it's windows or doors or things like things of that nature, um, or even even a large area of, of glass paneling. I think that I, that fits already in there or would be covered in G, but we, we definitely can look at spelling that out if we need to. And the same with the EFIS too. The EFIS would be something that would be covered under exceptions. And we're just, you know, we're here today and off to another job tomorrow or next month. So, you know. Just... Yeah, I, to, to speak to the glass, the library uh, across the street from my office has uh, predominantly glass facade. Um, so I don't see any problem with glass and ethos is a very common um, material that's used in, in uh, commercial applications that I think could, uh, that, would, that would blend well with the architecture that they've got. So I personally don't have an issue with including either one of those. I've um, seen what else on the on the commission feel differently. Jeff, will you stop sharing your screen so we can see everybody? Yes. I agree with what, what you're saying, the different materials. Well, and again, if the motion is open to say that staff, um, you know, will make a motion to approve with adding the materials as suggested by the applicant, we'll get with them before it goes to council and come up with the actual wording of it. The item G that Jeff just shared with us, would that suffice for that? 
Yeah, um, I think so. But, you know, sometimes when staff changes, it's better to just have it spelled out. Yes. So, um, you know, for future staff, if they say, well, we're not sure about what they thought, we'll have, we can definitely spell out glass. And, you know, if EFIS wants to be spelled out specifically, um, again, if there's any kind of other technology, I think, I think we could work with that as long as the main concern is to keep quality materials. Uh, Shannon has always done a great job. So at this point, we have no concerns. But if, if staff ever changes, either they are here, we want to make sure that everyone is it's on the same page. Sure. Does that work for you, Russell? Yeah, thank you. I'd really be happy to answer any questions. Anyone have questions for Mr. Gully? All right, anyone else wish to speak on this case? All right, I'm going to close public comment. Anyone wish to make a motion? Make a motion to approve with the um, added materials negotiated with Russell in the planning department. I'll second Terry's motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye by show of hands. Opposed? That should be seven zero. All right, next case. Z2102, 124 to 128 West 4th Street. Request for approval of rezoning from the light manufacturing zoning district to the central business district zoning district being 0.396 acres located at 124 to 128 West 4th Street. Hi, Shelly Pascal again. Um, this proposal is going from light manufacturing to the central business district. Um, it is located at 124 through 128 West 4th Street. You might recall this property back in January 27, 2020. We actually approved, or this commission approved, a conditional use for household living allowed within a lot manufacturing district. It is located in District 3, Harry Thomas, and it's in the downtown neighborhood. As I stated, it is zone lot manufacturing. It's in the downtown neighborhood. This is a couple of photographs of, or this is a photograph of the subject property, and then um, a warehouse that's directly to the west of the subject property. And this is looking across West 4th Street from the subject property. I did send out 12 notifications. I received one in favor and zero in opposition. And the proposed central business district is consistent with the downtown future land use. Um, the comp plan goal is to reinforce downtown San Angelo as a principal commercial service and cultural center. By restoring, while restoring its need for residential development and enhancing its existing and historical uh, character. The proposed use, which will be warehouse and, and living quarters does meet the intent of the, the comp plan. We also feel that the central business district zoning um, has additional benefits that are, that will allow um, reduced setback or reduced requirements for setbacks in, in parking. And we believe that this proposed zone change is consistent with the zoning ordinance for the subject property. Most of the subject or the surrounding area of the subject property is warehouse or industrial. And a portion of this existing structure will remain as warehouse. Um, and therefore we do not believe there'll be in any anticipated impacts to the surrounding area. And a portion of this will be utilized for living quarters. Um, the subject property has been a warehouse for many years, and as the downtown kind of area grows and develops, as it has um, in the last several years, we feel that there will be a need for housing um, to help it to continue to grow. Therefore, uh, the rezoning to the central business district will help encourage this growth. We do not believe that there will be any um, impact on the natural environment, and as a community need, staff does feel that there isn't a, a need for con, uh, additional housing, especially in the downtown neighbor or downtown area. And rezoning would allow this. And this area is really in transition. Um, and this application is consistent with that 
and there will be no negative effects on the, the development in the area. City staff, we are recommending approval of the rezoning from the lot manufacturing zoning district to the central business district located at 124 through 128 West 4th Street. Is there any questions for me? All right, any questions for the staff? I'm gonna open it up for public comment. Good morning, my name is Lori. I'm the one that owns the buildings. Um, I just wanna thank everyone for their time, first of all. And I, in recent months, I became aware of Steve Eustace's stone change, his request to consolidate the Salvation Army's recent successful rezone to CVD, and looked at this as an opportunity to bring forth the same unified front and purpose to create a mixed use of development for my properties without the restrictions or limitations that currently there are in place with the ML. And that's my primary purpose here. Um, the Salvation Army is just right. I'm directly, well, kind of adjacent and directly behind them. And I just looked at this as, you know, a, a prime time to try to move forward with CBD, which can also influence the new opportunities for economic growth and development for that area. You know, and it's quite a bit of an eyesore. And I want to really try to put a new face on that and give it a new purpose. And I just want to thank you for your time and consideration in this matter. And thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Lori. Ma'am. Lori, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this case? All right, I'm going to close public comment. Um, open it up for the commissioners to share thoughts or make a motion. Make a motion to present, uh, to approve as presented. <laughs> I'll second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve as presented. All in favor say aye by show of hands. Opposed? That was 7 0. All right. Um, Conditional uses, planning commission has final authority for approval. Appeals may be directed to city council. CU 2101, 112 North Milton Street, a request for approval of conditional use for household living in the neighborhood commercial zoning district for a property located at 112 North Milton Street. Good morning, commissioners. Sherry Bailey, principal planner. I'll be presenting this one. Just one moment. Um, the address on this is 112 North Milton Street. That should uh, sound familiar to the commissioners. Uh, it is a piece of property that you have acted on in the past. What's being requested is household living in a neighborhood commercial zone. It's on 0 0.144 acres. It's a residential structure that has been used as an office for the veterinarian clinic that's located on this property. And um, when the uh, veterinarian requested the original zone change, he had a larger plan in mind. He has been moving forward with that and has accomplished the improvements that he had intended on doing. So now uh, the property right here, which is part of his office, will remain part of the office. He has built the larger veterinarian clinic on this property. And this is the piece of property that in the past was a residential home, then was used as part of the veterinarian clinic. And now he's wanting to move it back into household living uh, with a plan for doing um, intern living when he invites interns to come and get experience there or uh, a new veterinarian as he's doing some residency. This is in District 5, Lane Carter's district, and it's in the central neighborhood. Uh, as you can see, uh, the general future land use for this area was neighborhood originally. Um, Neighborhood commercial was the zoning that the veterinarian clinic requested and that was approved. This is the piece of property that we're talking about. Um, and it's immediately adjacent to a home that is zoned RS1. 
and he's not planning on making any changes at all to the exterior of that property. Uh, he wants to keep it as a residence and looking as a residence. He's doing some remodeling inside. This is the uh, property that is just kind of southeast of that and is where the office is now and part of the veterinary clinic and that will remain that way. And then this is a picture of the new hospital and, and veterinarian facility, which is at the end of the property and was his original intent. So it's kind of transitioning back to the original use. Uh, we sent out 21 notices to the surrounding property owners. I talked to three or four people on the phone that were just asking what he intended and then were comfortable with it. And we have received three more in favor and none against. Um, staff does not anticipate that there will be any impacts uh, to this request. It's always been a house. It still it looks like a house and will be used that way. We believe that the uh, conditional use household living is consistent with the ordinance requirements. And in fact, in most uh, neighborhood commercial areas, you have a, a mix of uses with residential being interspersed within the uh, small commercial area. So we think this is fitting and it is certainly compatible with the surrounding area, which is generally residential. We anticipate no uh, effects on the natural environment. And the veterinary clinics are certainly busy. It, this one in particular um, has grown and done exactly what the uh, doctor had anticipated. And as he looked at what the future meant for his clinic, he really wanted to be able to provide housing, as I indicated, for um, staff coming into the area to do their work time and uh, learning time there, or a, a new veterinarian doctor coming in for residency. And this is an added attraction, and he thinks it benefits both the continued use of his facility and the neighborhood. And there are anticipated no changes to the existing development pattern. So staff is recommending approval of the conditional use for household living within the neighborhood commercial zoning district uh, with two conditions of approval. One, that the property owner shall maintain the residential nature of the home and meet all of the city ordinances. And two, that the property owner shall obtain a building permit for all of the remodeling that he intends to do. And he has done that. With that, I will stop sharing. Mm -hmm. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, do you want to ask questions for the staff? All right, I'm gonna open it up for public comment. I believe uh, Mr. McCool is here. Um, he may just be muted. Okay. I, I'm not seeing it, but Ray, is there anyone left in the waiting room that we haven't admitted yet? Um, there is a John's iPhone. Yeah. In here, in here that's already. Mis, that's Mr. McCool. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is an Air, Mary M in the waiting room that I don't have her on my list. Go ahead and admit her as well. This is our last case, and let's see if we can get. Hello. Hi. Hello. I'm Mr. McCool. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, I'm the, going to be the uh, contractor for Dr. Henderson there at the clinic. Since they got the new clinic built, he would like to turn this back into a residential. And the when I spoke with Sherry, she said rather than go back to the RS1, that she recommended to go back with the conditional. And we have, okay. we, have, we have applied for all the proper permits and everything, and we're just awaiting your approval or disapproval. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
Anyone else wish to speak on this case? All right, I'm going to close public comment. Anyone wish to make a motion or share comments? Make a motion to approve as presented. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve as presented. All in favor, say aye by show of hands. Opposed? Seven zero. Okay. Uh, director's okay. report. Yeah, uh, just wanted to make a couple of notes. Uh, I, first of all, I appreciate everyone's uh, flexibility with the uh, situation last week and the, that meeting uh, and then this special meeting. And so, again, I appreciate uh, you all being available for this uh, out of schedule uh, special meeting. Um, as I've always said, each week or each month, um, we don't know when we'll go back to in-person meetings, but for now, uh, we're still going to be virtual uh, as, you know, as far as we can see, uh, but we'll let you know uh, when we get closer to that, that changing and hopefully give you advance, pretty well advanced notice of that. Uh, the last thing I'd like to say is uh, just a thank you to Hillary. Uh, I know she made the announcement earlier, but that was before we went public. So just in the public meeting, I wanted to uh, just uh, note that this will be her last meeting um, and we wish her luck in her future uh, employment with Goodfellow. Uh, and we appreciate everything she's done for the city and we'll miss her. That's it for me. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, future meeting agenda and announcements. The next regular meeting of the Planning Commission is tentatively scheduled to begin at 9 a.m. on Monday, March 15th, 2021. Adjournment. Do I have a motion? Before I make a motion to adjourn, I'd like to thank Hillary also for all of her work. And <laughs> we appreciate you and motion to adjourn. All right. We have a motion. Second. Okay. And a second. Uh, all in favor of uh, a motion to adjourn, say aye by show of hands. Opposed? Seven zero. Thank you. All right.